President Supriya Bailey, Dean and Dr. Donna Kosopoulos, board members, committee seat chairs, co-chairs, new members and the renewed members, students and colleagues, friends around the globe. It's the highest and the most humbling honor for me to greet each and every of you and welcome all of you to Comparative and International Education Society Annual Conference 2023, CIES 2023. I'm so proud that we have recorded around 3,500 participants with wow. over 2,500 new members registered for this great gathering. And I just want to thank you all very much for joining our annual gathering with the great enthusiasm and professionalism. Um, please, um, before I introduce the first event uh, for CIES 2023 today, please allow me to invite Dr. Donna Kosopoulos, my dean at Western University, uh, who has been strongly supporting CIES 2023 due to a land acknowledgement. Donna, please. So uh, welcome everyone. Uh, as as June, uh, Dr. Lee introduced me, my name is Donna Katsopoulos and I'm the Dean of the Faculty of Education at Western University. So on behalf of the Faculty of Education and Western, we're really pleased to welcome delegates to the 67th uh, Comparative International Education Society annual meeting. And as you know, this year's theme is improving education for a more equitable world. It seems very fitting in, in Canada today and in many parts of the world, February 14th, it's, we're celebrating the Day of Love. And it's, it's uh, really an appropriate sort of moment to think about the importance of a collective global commitment to a more equitable world. And so we're really pleased to be supporting uh, this conference and, and Dr. Lee's work and our scholars at the University of Western Ontario. So Western University is located on the traditional lands and territories of the Anishinaabe, Haudenosaunee, Lenapewak, and Chinookton nations on lands connected with the London Township and Somber Treaties of 1796 and Dish with One Spoon Covenant Wampum. It's really important in Canada that we recognize our first people and we think about our relationship as settlers to Canada with the Canada's first people as a way of reconciliation and remembering. The land continues to be home to diverse Indigenous people, First Nations, Métis, and Inuit, whom we recognize as the contemporary stewards of the land and the vital contributors to our society. It is the commitment of educators in Canada and the commitment of our institution to work towards reconciliation as a constant source of inspiration for the work that we do. I invite uh, conference attendees to learn more about the Faculty of Education, Western University, our programs, and to reach out to us. So to close, I wish you the very best in this exciting conference. The program looks incredible. And the sheer number of individuals who've come together from all over the world to think about these critical issues at this moment of, in time emphasizes the importance of your work. So congratulations and thank you for your efforts to create a more politically fair and just society. Thank you. Thank you so much, Donna. Um, learners and the educators are among those we care the most for a brighter future. But we're living in a turbulent past year along with the ongoing global pandemic. My heart was broken last night by the shooting on MSU campus. And I'm so saddened, as many of you share the same way, by those learners, educators, educational professionals, and many other people globally who lost their lives, like many in the student protest in Iran, Sri Lanka, over thousands and even more in Turkey's and uh, serious earthquakes and in the Russian invasion to Ukraine. And those who were killed last night on MSU campus in the United States. They happened for many reasons. Some were nature disasters or civil crimes, while many were wars, political violences, and human tragedies. Please allow me to invite you, all of you, for a minute of silence 
to respect and honor those uh, innocent lives lost. Thank you very, very much. Now, please allow me to introduce the structure of our kickoff event this morning. Um, I'm so honored to have a group of guests uh, who can join us and can um, deliver their guest talk um, over three minutes each. Um, so again, please allow me to uh, first uh, invite um, Dr. and my dean uh, Donna Kosopoulos to deliver her welcome message. You're on mute. June, I just, Dr. Lee, I just wanted to e extend, um, I, I, I delivered it with the land acknowledgement, so I won't take up extra time, but I do want to comment on uh, the tragedy that we saw at Michigan State yesterday and just to remind us that um, in addition to that and all of the other incidences that Dr. Lee discussed, uh, we live in an environment where the security of learning, the ability to learn, the safety of learning is not uniformly applied across the world. And that really highlights the importance of this work. We know that education is a means of um, advancing society in the most critical ways. And so I, I just wanted to thank you again all for your work and for Dr. Lee's thoughtful reminder of all of the challenges we are facing across the world right now and even very close to home to us in Canada and the U.S. So again, thank you very much and I wish you the very best on your conference. Thank you so, so much, Donna, as always. And next, please allow me to uh, invite our president, Dr. Supriya Bailey to deliver her welcome message. Supriya, please. Thank you so much, June. Um, thank you, Dr. Katsopoulos, again, for your um, very powerful and moving land acknowledgement. Those are complex and, and, and complicated issues, and I appreciated your, your, your wisdom and your words and, and hope that we can follow some of that as we continue to deal with these challenging times. Um, I want to um, just again, it's my absolute pleasure and delight to welcome you all to the beginning of the CIES 2023 annual meeting. These have been, as Professor Lee said, very challenging times and the pandemic that we've been through the last three years, the, the issues around the world, the natural disasters, um, these are making it incredibly hard for people to spend time together in community and to learn and grow from each other. So I'm really glad that CIES continues to experiment with innovative, accessible, and economic ways to ensure that our society and our community continues to be able to grow and share information and knowledge with each other, um, not just with each other, but also with a much wider audience. So I wanna take it just a second to welcome every presenter here and thank you for your extraordinary work doing all the kinds of different types of research and studies that you're doing in incredibly challenging times. I wanna welcome every student who's joining us for the first time and hope that this is a really inspiring place for you all to, to learn and grow from and meet new people and challenge um, those of us who might've been coming for a little while longer than that. So um, we're looking forward to meeting and working with you all. Um, every practitioner and policymaker who comes here to share their work and to learn from the work that's being done in other places and other corners of the world, 
um, and have been working to make equitable education a reality in every corner of the world, I wanna welcome you all. I know that no matter how challenging times have been, when I come to CIES, it still feels like a small community, one where the experiences that we bring are exponentially larger because we get to share it with this community. So I look forward to many interesting presentations over the next few days, great conversations, making new friends, and I hope that you all experience the very same. Um, before I wrap up, I just wanna say a, a huge thank you to President-elect Jun Lee for his hard work in preparing for this conference, along with the extraordinary teams at the OED, the Office of the Executive Director and at Maestro Meetings and the students who worked with Dr. Lee at Western University and his colleagues at Western who have supported him during this journey. As I well know, this work does not happen alone. It does not happen by ourselves, but it is a very small and mighty team who does this work. So I welcome you all and hope you have a wonderful conference. Thank you. Thank you so, so much, Dr. Shabria. Uh, next, please allow me to um, invite um, Dr. Najib Shafiq, the director of OED and professor at the University of Pittsburgh. Najib, please. Sure. Many thanks, June. Greetings, everyone. Uh, I want to congratulate um, Professor June Lee for the successful launch of the conference. I also want to recognize the generosity and support of Dean Donna Katsopoulos and Western University. It has been such a pleasure working with you. We thank you for being uh, such huge supporters of the field and of CIES. And um, I also want to thank uh, the wonderful team that uh, Professor Lee has put together, uh, as well as my extraordinary colleagues at the uh, OAD, the Office of the Executive Director and uh, Maestro Meetings. It is uh, a lot of work and I hope, uh, you know, we, uh, that uh, you know, every all of you have a have a good conference, um, and I just want to, on behalf of my colleagues at the University of Pittsburgh, uh, I wish you all a wonderful conference. Thank you so much, Najib. Um, so next, please allow me to um, invite uh, Dr. Andre S. Lumaba, President of WCCES and a professor at Cornell University. Okay, thank you so much, June, and thank you and greetings to all of you. Uh, it's so nice <laughs> to see you virtually and I look forward to seeing some of you for the first time in many years and new faces uh, in Washington, DC. In the meantime, it's such a pleasure to be here today for this opening. Uh, we have to use our creativity and the creativity that uh, Jun Lee has shown is really inspiring so that we're having an opening now. We have another one in DC. So in my capacity as the president of the World Council of Comparative Education Societies, WCCES, and my personal capacity, I bring warm greetings and words of heartfelt congratulations to President-elect Professor Jun Lee uh, for his remarkable leadership in bringing back CIES to some kind of normalcy that everyone who had been the leadership position had been trying, but the global system, the pandemic have resisted. But finally, we're going to make it and thank you so much. And thank you, as many of you have said, uh, with the team that you put together, I, I want to thank all of you, the, um, the, uh, uh, the uh, CIS, um, the uh, uh, executive director, uh, Professor Najib uh, Safik, and, and everybody else. Um, the theme is quite fitting in this moment of struggle, uh, improving education for a more equitable world. We will hear more from our incredible uh, community of uh, scholars, practitioners in, in, uh, in the coming days. But I really want to thank um, Professor Lee for 
thinking of this uh, theme, which is so fitting in the post COVID world we're struggling, we cannot go back to all the inequalities, uh, inequality in terms of peer access, inequality in the content. And um, the COVID has shown us that it's a small world. Uh, so I, I want to thank you again for your um, vision. And I want to join um, those who have already thanked Dean Dana uh, Kostopoulos. If you do not have the support of your institution, it, it's very difficult. It's a lot of struggle. So it's wonderful when you have that support. So I want to thank you. Uh, all I want to say is that um, um, it's really my pleasure to inform you that after years of uh, wondering when and when and when finally um, the WCCS 18th Congress will be held in 2024. Sore Supriya, we were so ready to meet in Bangalore, but it wasn't meant to be. But we will meet somewhere. Uh, that somewhere is most likely to be Cornell University. A more formal announcement will be made, but I'd like to give you this hint and uh, ask you to get prepared to coming, to joining us to celebrate this uh, long, long waiting uh, 24th, um, 18th Congress of WCCES. So I want to just add that CIES is a founding member of the council. And I, I would not say the most influential, every small society in terms of number, they are all influential. That's the new uh, vision that we have brought, inclusion. So however, in terms of membership, in terms of the longevity of its commitment, CIES plays a very, very special role. And therefore, it will be a pleasure that pure coincidence when we hold the Congress in 2024, uh, Professor Jun Lee will, according to the bylaws of, w, uh, of CIS, will be the immediate past president representing CIS to WCCES. So with all your commitment and capacity, we look forward to having you as a, a really uh, a member of our organizing uh, um, a, a group to make it a successful one. So I just want to uh, stop here mm -hmm. and say that um, I wish the full success for CIS 2023 under the able leadership of Professor Lee and the wonderful team of people behind with him that made it possible. So I look forward to seeing you in Washington, DC. Some of you know that Washington DC CIS have a very special meaning for me. So June, thank you so much for making it uh, so uh, forthcoming and wonderful celebration again. And uh, so uh, thank you and uh, greeting to many of, of the friends I see, Regis, um, Balkun, all of you in fact, mm -hmm. <laughs> Professor Chusu Yimura, everybody. <laughs> okay, thank you again. Thank you so, so much, Andre. Um, uh, I'm actually touched by your kind of words. Uh, also, really appreciate that uh, we, actually, we actually are privileged to have the great news from you first uh, about the next uh, uh, WCCES gathering. Um, definitely, we have a strong connection all together from the very beginning. And that's the, I would consider that's the best way to uh, have our community building. Uh, so thank you very much. We also have other uh, WCCES past president here, uh, Dr. Mark Vry, who will be invited later. Thank you so much, Andre. Um, please allow me uh, to uh, uh, invite uh, Dr. Bao Liu, uh, president of China Comparative Education Society, a professor at Beijing Normal University. Uh, China and Japan, uh, Hong Kong, uh, very late right now. Uh, I'm so sorry that we have have our opening uh, ceremony in the morning on the first day. So I'm sorry for that. 
a button, please. Okay, thank you, thank you, Professor Lee. And now it's uh, so nice to see you know many old friends. You know, I'm, I'm you know even we cannot see person by person to person. Um, it's my great pleasure to attend the opening ceremony of the CIS 2023 conference. On behalf of the China Comparative Art Society, I would like to extend my sincere congratulations to the on the opening of the CIS 2023 and my sincere greetings to participants from all over the world. The theme of the conference is improving education for a more equitable world which directly addresses the headaches of the pains of the contemporary world. For thousands of years, the human being has been pursuing the development of more equitable education systems to build more equitable societies and a more equitable world. But today's world is full of uh, crisis and uncertainty. The United Nations has already stated that and still insists on that education is a fundamental human right. The 2030 Agenda for Sustainable Development of the United Nations calls for ensuring inclusive and equitable equity ed quality education and promote lifelong learning opportunities for all. However, the economic downturn and the COVID-19 pandemic have uh, exacerbated the ongoing global education crisis strongly influencing the realization of SDG4. Even the digital learning now, which is a very um, a hot topic, on the one hand is promoting the equity of education, but also it's uh, uh, beating <clears throat> the digital gap in education. Today we Comparative education scholars take the responsibilities of the times and uh, also use the CIS 2023 as a platform to discuss how to reshape our education systems and build a more equitable world. As a scholar who has uh, been engaged in comparative education research for about 40 years, I'm looking forward to all the presentations and the learning the new ideas and wisdoms from all the participants. I sincerely wish the conference a great success, and I sincerely wish every participant keeps healthy and enjoys the conference. Thank you. Thank you so much, Bao Chen, uh, for your kind of words and wishes. Um, um, I'm sorry that uh, we'll have to miss you um, on, on site, but uh, we can still see each other uh, from our online days, uh, these two days. Next, please allow me to uh, invite uh, Dr. Rachel Smollet, a president of uh, French speaking Society of Comparative Education and a professor at the University of Bordeaux. Thank Rachel, you so please. much. And thank you so much and congratulations for for your leadership, dear June, Professor and President Lee. Uh, on behalf of uh, AFEC uh, and uh, the Institut Universitaire de France, it is a, a privilege and a, hon a honor to me to welcome you uh, to the CIES conference in Washington. I would like to thank uh, very warmly colleagues and students for the extraordinary work they have done to make this event possible. And I also wish to salute all the numerous participants from all over, all over the world. This uh, cultural and linguistic uh, diversity that will be expressed here is indeed, I believe, the honor of our discipline and the promotion of such a diversity is at the heart of our common ambition, which is to combine the production of knowledge on education and learning and social progress. In this, our ambition assumes a scientific humanistic and progressive mission that is contained in the title and the incredibly promising program of this event, Improving Education for a More Equitable World. It expresses such cardinal goals for researchers, educators, and citizens in a context of global changes that comparative education is taking to heart. 
both to better comprehend them, to better prepare the new generations for them, and also, let me say it, to challenge our governments in a concert of global voices that strengthen one in particular, that of UNESCO. We have to defend again and again such a humanistic conception of education when an economic reason stands to promote a more and more polarized, fragmented, uh, to put it straight, a capitalist vision of our humanity. As a matter of fact, over the last decade, uh, our societies have been experiencing deep transformations which have affected our collective well-being, especially for the so-called left behind of globalization and changed how people learn, work, consume, vote or trust each other. Upcoming challenges are even more daunting with new forms of education impacted by artificial intelligence or by large scale pandemics, but also climate changes, migration crisis, local and global conflicts. Liberal democracy cannot be taken for granted and to sustain and nourish such a democratic culture based on social justice and equity. Education for democracy is essential and our disciplines has a major role to play in this. This CIS conference is a great opportunity to federate our common goal and to explore the path for a public education that does not get lost in individualism and educational capitalism but promotes values of solidarity that condition the construction of a democratic, fair and sustainable democratic societies. I wish you all a wonderful and fruitful CIS conference. Thank you so, so much, Dr. Regis. Uh, next, please allow me to um, invite um, um, Dr. Miki um, Skimura, um, President of Comparative Education Society of Japan, a professor at the Sofia University. Uh, I'm, again, I'm, my apologies, that must be too late for you, but I appreciate <laughs> that you can still with us. Thank you very much, Miki. Hello, everyone. Thank you very much. I'd like to congratulate all of you on this wonderful opening ceremony at CIS annual conference. First of all, on behalf of Japan Comparative Education Society, I would like to extend my sincere gratitude to Professor Jun Lee and his wonderful team for the conference organizing committee with the wonderful support of Dean Dr. Donna, uh, sorry, Kotpolas, sorry, and also the president, CIS, Sabrina Bailey. When we started the preparation of this meeting, Dr. Jun Lee kindly informed us of his dream. He emphasized that he would like to make this conference focusing on more diversity, inclusion, and equity, and also chose the wonderful theme is improving education for a more equitable world. Today, uh, now we can see the sign language is uh, information on the screen. This is one of the very, very good sign for us to enjoy this more equitable and inclusive atmosphere. But he also asked us to translate the this CIS message in many languages. So my Japan Comparative Education Society also translated the wonderful message from steering committee into Japanese and many Japanese colleagues were so much happy to be involved in this activity. Same time, the perspective of equity and inclusiveness also a very important topic and they required in this context can also be felt in various parts of this Congress management by splitting the date schedule between online and on-site session. Uh, this gives us a lot of opportunity of participation. As for me, tonight after this session, I have one online workshop, but at the same time on this weekend, I would like to visit Washington DC to see some of you in person after three years of absence. So very looking forward to it. 
So thank you very much for wonderful opportunities. Thank you Following so this. much. Thank you so much. Uh, yes, Dr. thank Miki. you very much. Yeah, so pleased yeah. to see you and I'm looking forward to see you in DC. Soon, yeah, thank very you very soon. much. Yeah, I'm aware of thank the time, you. and I was reminded by the Zoom host that uh, we have to uh, close the session. Yes, on time. thank you very much. Yeah, so um, let's. It's it's my fault, you know, not to start it on time. Uh, let's uh, keep the time all right. Uh, next, please allow me to uh, invite Dr. Mark Bray, a past uh, CIES president, and also uh, he is a past president of WCCERS. Um, he is a professor at uh, uh, East China Normal University and the University of Hong Kong. Mark, please. Thank you, Professor Lee. And I would also add past president of the Comparative Education Society of Hong Kong. So I take the liberty of uh, bringing greetings from the Hong Kong team to add to all of the other distinguished guests. And indeed, as a past CIS president, I followed Ndri Asiel Lumumba when she held her conference in Washington, DC. Uh, I organized the Vancouver conference and I thought that was really a lot of work, but now you are doing online and offline and bigger. And I really congratulate you on all of that. I also just want to echo Regis Mallet a little bit. Uh, when you talk about the complexities in which we work and urge participants not to take the title for granted that everybody wants to make a more equitable world, because frankly, they don't. There are sessions on privatization of schools. We've got lots of stratification of universities. We've got private tutoring, one of my favorite topics. And there are going to be several sessions immediately after this opening ceremony. A lot of parents don't want equitable worlds. They want to keep on top. Businesses want to keep on top. So let's address the topic quite critically to see what should be done about it to whom. Thank you, congratulations. Thank you so much. Um, I'm honored to invite uh, Dr. Gita Steiner Akamsi, uh, also our past president and director of NORAC, a professor at Columbia University. Um, Gita, please. Thank you so much, June, and uh, congratulations on handling this complicated format of CIS. In many regards, COVID and post COVID made our social world smaller but professionally much bigger. So what we are experiencing thanks to online conferences and hybrid formats is unseen, unprecedented in our society. Since I'm based at Teachers College, Columbia University at the moment, I think it will be an opportune location to talk about the professionalization of the field. CIS is helping us and we are all servants of comparative and international education. CIS as a society helps us to professionalize the field. It is an association, we have journals, we have conferences, we create jobs, we, have, we create a professional identity. And this is what conferences are really all about. And we do hope that CIS eventually becomes the first conference for everyone and not the second conference that they attend. Because comparative, studies is not just a perspective and also working in development or international cooperation is not just a consultancy job that many of us do in addition to their other work it is really about standards it's about debates it's about great books and many of them i think our canon is very large but it is really about instilling that sense of professional identity by exchanging with peers a last word, uh, I saw the first conference was in 1996. I know that my informal mentor, Harold Noah, uh, he was talking about times at CIS where by a show of hands, presidents were elected. That's how small this was. In 1996, we were a few hundred people. We had at my time, 12 special interest groups just before, coming to this session, I looked up, we have seven regional 
special interest groups, we have over 30. So we grew tremendously internally in numbers, but also in terms of diversification. Since many of you are participating online from other countries, what I wanted to tell you is don't forget to also strengthen your own national or regional comparative international education society. CIS just happens to be the biggest society and very international, which is wonderful, but this should not replace your work at the national level to help professionalize the field. So I wish you all a successful conference. Thank you so much, uh, Gita. I cannot agree with you more anymore, you know, and also I really appreciate your point. Comparative is not only a, um, a kind of perspective, but to me, it's a way of life. Really uh, appreciate uh, your comments. Thank you very, very much. Uh, next, please allow me uh, to invite uh, two um, conference planners for my team. I really appreciate their hard work. Day and night, they never bored um, um, uh, with my message it uh, bombarded uh, all the time. Um, so could you please, uh, uh, please allow me to uh, invite Dr. Radhika Inger. Um, and also a um, uh, research at uh, Columbia University. Uh, Radhika, please. Thank you, Professor Lee. This is fantastic. Finally, it's here. All your hard work has finally come to fruition. So I really thank you for your leadership. And you titled this conference More Equitable World. And I think the planning of the conference has been equitable as well, because you have constituted so many different committees, so many different this, there was a cross linkages of the six, the six came together. Uh, there were also all these thematic things, uh, uh, committees that you had formed. There were also regional uh, focuses so that we don't leave any region out. So I think you have really impersonified the theme of the conference and how you have planned this uh, uh, in, in, the, in the planning of the conference. I really congratulate you on the thinking and on getting all of us involved to see how we can cross pollinate ideas because sometimes if you are a part of a SIG, you just remain there and you don't have many opportunities to cross pollinate your ideas along with other regional SIGs or along with your other uh, thematic colleagues. So it was really wonderful to have that idea going. By the way, uh, for all the members who are participating, if you are not a part of any SIG, I would really recommend you to be a part of a SIG, join the board. Um, and become the leaders of the board so that you know we can have a much more stronger presence in all these different themes. And just one more last uh, thing on my uh, side is uh, also getting all the international organizations, giving them a separate spot, uh, uh, getting all the international speakers, getting their perspectives. I think it is really, uh, you have really covered all the bases and all the ground and I was so happy to support you as a part of the, of the planning committee. And I hope that, uh, Everyone who's here are able to join the online conference. Uh, also, if you are able to join the on-site conference, that's great because we are catering to a lot of different uh, needs and demands of uh, people. And so this is a great platform to have an online meeting as well as a on-site meeting. Don't feel afraid to say hello because I think this is a mental note for me also, I was very hesitant that oh, when I saw Gita on the at CSM, like should I say hello or not? But obviously, <laughs> I think I was there, uh, you know, speaking to her, and it was really wonderful to have those insights from all the leaders. And you will find it to a very fascinating conference with a lot of friendly people. Thank you so much. Thank you so so much, Dr. Radhika. Uh, next. Uh... I, uh, I'm honored to invite Dr. Marcio uh, Demberley, uh, also our CIS 2023 planner uh, at University of Montreal. Marcio, please. Thank you, Lee. Uh, well, there isn't much to add. Uh, I think uh, everything has been said. I would like to personally thank you uh, for inviting me to join uh, the planning committee. I was hesitant. Uh, but I'm really pleased that I uh, eventually accepted and it's been a wonderful uh, journey uh, with you and the rest of the, the planning team. I can't imagine what the organizing team did. You are on mute. With the proposal that came out of uh, the, the planning committee, it's, uh, I looked at the program, it's just 
uh, wonderful to see such a diverse and deep uh, programming that uh, the organizing committee has uh, put together. Uh, but as a graduate of uh, Michigan State University, I was really touched by uh, how we, we started. We are definitely in a very troubled uh, world. Uh, you look everyone, everywhere, there is something uh, wrong going on. And I remember several years ago, Jackie Kirk and Rebecca Winthrop wrote a paper uh, where they talked about healing classrooms. I think that we are due to talk about the healing society because there are many people who are suffering uh, in various parts of, of the world. Uh, so to improve education for a more equitable world shouldn't be taken lightly. Uh, I think that education can play a major role in healing our societies that are currently uh, suffering. I'm quite impressed by the program. Uh, over 1,000 uh, sessions uh, that will be um, unfolded 